Next week, we'll we'll do one that you guys suggested. We have stepped up our game, okay? Yes. We have gone from zero to 60, no fucking around. All right, so last week, in episode one, we started simple. We did a video game online. No big whoop. You guys have been doing it for a decade, right? Next episode, you will get to hear about us playing... <laughs> pen and paper, Dungeons and Dragons, Dungeons motherfucker. Dungeons and Dragons. We're doing D&D. We're going back to the 80s, <laughs> and we're no. playing D&D with a group of dudes. With a group. Uh, well, maybe. maybe and one, girls. Maybe one actual girl, which would really lend a lot of validation and legitimacy. It's true, although us. it wouldn't be an authentic experience. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we, we wouldn't. Um, uh. Uh, so, yeah, we, we got in, invited and snapped up the opportunity to attend... Uh, a Dungeons and Dragons tournament hosted by Matthew Mercer, who we've already been talking about on this podcast. Right, played Leon Kennedy in Resident Evil. Such a nice guy. Right. He has beautiful hair. Mm-hmm. Although, if you cut it off, he loses all of his power. He's not really as good an actor. No, if he's you terrible. Cut his hair off. But uh, he's t- he's hosting a D and D event. He's a dungeon master, Sam. He's a master. Of dungeons. <laughs> wow. I don't know what that means. Here's the thing, guys. I've never played D&D. I don't know how to do it. And frankly, I'm frightened. Right. Well, I'm a little frightened too. But so Sam has never done this. I played Dungeons and Dragons when I was in high school, like maybe sophomore. And I was our dungeon master when we did it. Wow. Right. Nerd right. cred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, it was kind of a bastardized version. I was also playing. We were just really excited and we were nerdy. I mean, I'm nerdy now, but I've sort of couched it in... Um, a fun career. Nerd drop. But I have some experience. I understand how it goes. Now, I was 16 when I did. It's been a long time. But you have zero experience. I don't know what. And we got an email mm-hmm. from Matt asking us to pick our characters. Right. For anyone who's familiar, I mean, normally you have a campaign, Sam. Okay. And what that means is it's ongoing. It's like Charles Dickens. It's a serial drama. You get together regularly. Really? We people do we, this? People people do it a lot. Wow. But we're doing Matt says that it's a one off. Okay. So, so this it's going to be a self-contained yeah. short story. Right, line. right. Your first taste of the drug is free. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um so it's a one off, but you don't know anything about this. No, so all... and I have to pick a character and they've given me things like I can be a human, dwarf, elf, yeah, slow halfling, down. slow down, to slow down. Goliath. What are these things? Matthew, what do I do? Matt... Can I just be Sam? <laughs> <laughs> hey. So everyone here's the people who are doing it. It's Matt Mercer, uh-huh. Sam Regal, uh-huh. and myself. Uh-huh. Talos and Jaffe. Oh, my God. Oh, will be there. He's a, a longtime player with Matt. First time listener. First time listener. <laughs> and we roped uh, a bewildered Travis Willingham. <laughs> oh, man. That's going to be fun. We just like bringing, <laughs> a, bringing a bull into a china shop. <laughs> Literally. And then probably his his wife, Laura, uh, which is not really that big of a surprise because she's, well, she really is a friggin' nerdlinger. She is. And knows all about this stuff. Now, she and I, we've played video games. She is a big player of Dragon Age and Skyrim. She likes the aesthetic. I've played things like Baldur's Gate and Dungeons and Dragons Pool of Radiance (laughs) over the years, which is essentially taking... It's the same game, but the computer is handling all the dice rolling and Uh the math. I see. And giving you graphics instead of your (laughs) imagination. So Um, we'll be using our imaginations to tell a story about elves and orcs and things like that. Yes. And we, the closest I've come to playing D&D is I saw the Community episode where they played Dungeons & Dragons. Right. So uh, will Joel McHale be there? Uh, he said he wasn't available okay. that night, but maybe if we turn it into a full-blown campaign. Okay, and we, would... so we, we choose characters for ourselves, yeah. and then the Dungeon Master sort of paints us a yarn yeah. and puts our characters in a world, and right. we get to roll die, die. dice, die, die to dice figure out singular. what, uh, no, die is the singular. Die is the, yes, oh. sorry, it's the uh, red wine and the now Paps Blue Ribbon. PBR, exactly. everybody. Matthew will have the whole story in his okay. head. And it's choose your own adventure. We can make choices, but it'll be, you know, walled in within okay. the confines okay. of Matthew's brain. So help me choose my character. Should I be a cleric, rogue, halfling, <laughs> well, Goliath? You... Or should I be a ranger, wizard, tiefling? What is that? Tiefling is just a person with sort of like ram, ram's head horns. That sounds fun. <laughs> devilly person. <laughs> oh, um, a devilly person. Oh, yes. I don't like that. So the only thing I would steer you against... <laughs> that was not a force burp. That was a real authentic uh, PBR. Authentic. I burp. can smell it. It was. Um, it was. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, stay away from Rogue because Laura Bailey and I are probably going to battle over that. Okay. I, I was right to the front line and said, oh, I'm a half elf uh, Rogue. And Travis said that uh, Laura was a little pissed that I jumped on that. Wow. Because that's sort of her territory. There's already animosity. But what I recommended is that uh, Laura Bailey and I have the same birthday. So I said, why don't we be twins? Oh. We could be half elf twins. Ooh, I like that. Um, can I just be the worst? What's the worst? I'll be the, the worst. worst character. Well, is that be like, like a gnome? Sure, what's that? Well, it's just a small person, a very small person. Uh, you, so it's just a short guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you got to pick a race. There's elves and there's humans and there's half elves because they like having sex together. Oh, God. And uh, half orcs and there are the tieflings. There are dragon people. What are we calling those? I can't remember what they're. Dragon born. Dragon born. So, all right. So we've established I'm going to be a, a, a garden gnome. Oh, you are going to do gnome? Well, you said I, you're, you're picking my character for me. Uh, okay, gnome. Okay, I am gnome. a gnome, of course. Then you have to pick a class. A class. So cleric, fighter, rogue, ranger, paladin, wizard, bard. Ooh. Bards play. They'll. You'll have like a lute or a mandolin, <laughs> and you'll play. Do it. I fight with this thing? Eh, occasionally, but more. You strum your guitar. And it inspires us all and gives us bonuses for our attacks or makes us feel better. And do I actually, in, in the playing of this game, do I actually have to sing songs? Yeah, do I yeah, have yeah. to bust out like M&M's, you know, like, <laughs> lose yourself in the moment, you know it, you know it. <laughs> Just to inspire you guys to, like, do better? Uh, <laughs> Come on, guys. It's the eye of the tiger. It's the thrill of the fire. Uh, I think Matthew will give you extra points for that. Okay. But if you like hitting things with a stick, I would go warrior. <laughs> if you want to be a gnome of the cloth, you could be a cleric and get powers from the gods, the deities Ooh. above. You could be a cleric. You could be a ranger, which is like Robin Hood, I guess. You shoot arrows and okay. get in the woods. And Tell me this: to deer. You were picking a race. Is there racism in Dungeons and Dragons? Is it is it ra- is it racially like? Is there <sighs> are there racially tinged words that you can like call someone? Oh man, he's oh, yeah. a drew. You call him a nimlet. Yeah, that's very <laughs> offensive. <laughs> I think it all depends on the dungeon master. Okay, really, I'm gonna try to bring some racism. So, what to do you want to do? Do you want to be like a physical? A uh, tiny person, or do you want to ty- be a tiny person who makes magic happen? Can I do something where I get tossed? Like, tossed? <laughs> I don't actually have to do anything physical, though, right? I'm just rolling a die. Yeah, so the way it works is the creativity comes from Matthew's brain, but um, when we get into an altercation with maybe some kobolds, which oh, are no. like dog people, or oh, I hate dogs. a beholder, which is like a floating eyeball with like snake hair. Is there a train that comes through and kills us? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you'll have a certain number of hit points, okay. right? So that's how many times you, I could whack you with a stick before you die. Uh-huh. You'll have attributes like how high is your strength, your dexterity, oh. your wisdom, your <sighs> charisma. It's off the charts. And these are things that... Is there penis size? Because <laughs> I'm more thick than long. You can pencil it in. <laughs> okay. Underneath Constitution. (laughs) Um, And those things factor into, you know, sometimes you'll, like, meet a merchant and say, I want to try to smooth talk her into giving me a discount. But I can because I'm a a smooth talking gnome. Gnome, right. (laughs) Who knows all the tricks for under the sheets. And I can bust out some M&M. It sounds like you want to pick a high charisma because high charisma people are very attractive. You could be a stunning gnome. I don't even need that. I've already got that in spades. When we say gnome, I don't mean... You know, as tall as this beer can. The gnomes are like up to my knee, maybe, or maybe my thigh. But so do that's they have fun. tall pink hair that you can style? You can make that happen. But okay. I really encourage you to go gnome because normally people wuss out and they want to look all like Kate Moss. No one ever goes for the gnome. I'm going gnome. Or the dwarf. I'm going gnome. Thank you, Sam. Sure. For taking that hit. I will be a, a Kate Moss esque uh, half elf, <laughs> but you can take that hit for the team. Thank you. No, I will definitely be a gnome and possibly a bard gnome or a cleric gnome because wow, I want to be as dorky as possible. That's amazing. And we're going to do this. When It's coming up in like a week or two, right? Oh, it's early December. I can't remember the date. Wow. Um, but I agree to it. Matt's been inviting me for, uh, we've talked for, it's not just invited, like part of me in the back of my brain is like, remember those days when you played the D&D? It was so good. <laughs> and so I flirted with the idea of doing it, but then the other half of my brain, or should I say the front 90% of my brain mm. is like, uh, you're a dad. You gotta earn some money, <laughs> and you gotta um, not be 15 anymore. <laughs> but the little tiny nugget in the back is winning out. So we've talked about it on and off for a year, and finally I was like, hey, 
I have free time, a little bit of free time these You're days. You're making free time making for free our time. podcast. Right. And then I basically railroaded you into it because I thought it would make for good sport for episode three. I love sport and I love doing mm-hmm. things out of my comfort zone. And that's right. what this is going to be. And maybe we'll even take some pictures of the event and post them on our site, which doesn't yep. exist. Maybe we'll... if we get permission from the group, we'll record a little bit. And oh, listen that to would some be of amazing. Your, some of your mandolin playing. Well, so so check us out next week for uh, a recap of how the D&D went and mm-hmm. how my cleric gnome fared in the, uh, in the made-up world of Matthew Mercer's head. Mm-hmm. And for more stories of working and playing from Liam O'Brien and Sam Regal... I, I mean, I think we had a good show today. I think we we did we did good. Yeah, yeah, we learned a lot. I learned a lot about you. I learned a lot about uh, about Dungeons and Dragons and yeah. how it works. Mm-hmm. You learned how I smell after CrossFit. Uh, yeah, intimately. intimately. <laughs> I learned how your burps smell. Uh huh. And we learned that the capital of Malaysia is Kuala Lumpur. Right. But we don't know how to say goodbye in Malaysian. Maybe I should look that up. There we oh, go. Oh, the so pop good. wasn't there. All right. Yeah. So now is the part of the show where we talk about uh, the fun thing we done. Uh, the fun that we done, everybody. Last time around. Yeah, because every week on this show we challenge ourselves, every time on this show, we challenge ourselves to do a fun thing, to break the routine, to, to get, a, get a, 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 a break from the monotony of work. <laughs> I felt like I had to stab an EpiPen into your chest for a second. There. I was convulsing. Um, and really push ourselves out of our comfort zones and have some goddamn fun. Yeah. Okay. Last time we challenged ourselves to play Dungeons and Dragons straight up old school pen and paper. We we did it. We, we did it. We went in there. Oh my god. Uh, and we we might have been snake bit because <laughs> it we, was awesome. It was it was fucking awesome. Okay, <laughs> I'm just gonna say it. I'm gonna blow the compression on the microphone. It was fucking awesome. <laughs> and every fear that I had that I would want more of it, that I would become addicted to it in one session. I'm watching the waveforms blow. <laughs> Pro Tools wide open. I want more. I want more. And I'm not the only one. There, a- afterward, we'll back up to the beginning in a second, folks. Afterward, I went home going, oh, my God. I fucking love that. <laughs> I don't know if I'm the only one, but I fucking love that. A couple of days went by. I I sent a little probing email out to everyone saying, hey, I don't know about you guys, but I had a good time. I kind of feel like this has to happen again. And then none of you motherfuckers responded. So... I'm sitting at home going, oh, God, I, th- I think I'm the geekiest one in the world. They don't want to do it again. And I'm, I, sh- I I feel like I'm wearing a pocket protector and glasses and tape in the middle. Luckily, as time went on, as I talked to uh, some of our other um, warriors, I, w- I found out I wasn't the only one. For instance, Travis Willingham, who is the size of the Empire State Building. Yes. And built like uh, like, an, like an Adonis. Oh, he wants to so come handsome. back. He wants to come back. Yeah, he's more. the opposite of a geek. Right. He is, he's so, so debonair and confident and funny and mm-hmm. athletic, but he is hooked. And he played, he played a giant. He played, called a played, Goliath. Played. Yes. He, his character was a, he, was, he is a Goliath. That's right. And he played a Goliath. And he loved it and was great at it. All right. So we had... And not only him, but mm-hmm. I, f- I feel like your, your right. let's, cohort. Let's, let's paint ba- a picture. Let's back it up. Okay. When I got there, I couldn't stop giggling for the first 15 minutes because I couldn't believe we were actually doing it. Uh-huh. Um, so, like, Matthew Mercer, who... Uh, Matthew Mercer, everybody. Great voice actor. Great guy. Great dungeon master. I'll say this. Matthew Mercer never has to audition for me for any role in a project I direct Ever again. He is so committed to his dungeon mastering. Dungeoning master? I don't know what it is, but he was so good. He played 17 different characters and embodied them physically. Just snapped into every he, different role I, constantly. I thought he was that sort of smarmy guard stationed in front of the outpost at one point. Then I thought he was the bad guy that we were sent to kill. Yeah, he turned into an old fart at the oh pub. He was God, great. He, he was, was great. great. Oh, so in love with you, Matthew, right force. now. Yes. yes. Then, okay, so after we all settled in, we settled around the table, and it was it was me and you. I was a half-elf uh, rogue. I was a... Uh, Gnomic bard. I was a bard gnome, so I sang most of my uh-huh, stuff. Uh-huh, or, and it came in very handy. Yes. You also had very high perception. That came in handy. <laughs> uh, Laura Bailey was there. Laura Bailey did... Oh, Laura Bailey. Did, but, are the harps there? Laura Bailey. Yes. There, there. Uh, Laura Bailey played my twin sister. Uh, and she was a ranger, and she had a pet bear. And then Orion Akaba played a dragonborn mage, a befuddled 
uh, dragonborn mage who, who was maybe... a little quick on the trigger a couple times. Uh, yeah, I like to light up room. <laughs> he liked to, he like, he had one ma- one trick of of creating fireballs. <laughs> I feel or... like this particular wizard probably took advantage of the uh, eleven herbs and spices. <laughs> A little too much. Uh, Talos and Jaffe, who was another dragonborn paladin. And man, that guy was throwing out phrases and moves and shit that well, I could not. He's like a level yeah, 11. He, he knew what the fuck he was doing. I was like, wait, you can do that? Um, but let's talk about Laura, who claims, claims to have never never played Dungeons and Dragons. She owned that she, night. She, she destroyed in the fights she was taking it to the enemy. In the When we were searching for things, she was first to find a fucking mm-hmm. secret tunnel. She, she might as well have been auditioning for the Lord of the Rings because as soon as we started, you know, I had a 10 minute sort of uh, period of getting into the pool and going, ooh, it's a little cold. Oh, that's better. Laura right away was like, so tell me where he, I mean, she went into character from the get-go. Did not drop it and was committed and and a helpful teammate. Oh, mm-hmm. my God. She was she had to have done it before. But she didn't toss you like Travis did. Uh, you on the last episode said, is there a way to be tossed? And totally without any urging, Travis did pick you up and huck you across the hallway. We were stuck in a, we, we were stuck in a hallway. There were clearly traps in front of us, and we had no way of getting past them. Uh, I believe that the two uh, magic wielders in our group tried to search for uh, secret passages and couldn't find them. Hold, hold up. We have this. I have this moment. We have audio. Right. That's the moment that I have to oh, play. Oh, we're going to play it for okay. you because why Why me tell you when right. you can hear it firsthand? Let me preface this. Uh, Matthew has just slapped down an hourglass to give us the urgency we needed in the moment we were in. By the time and, the sand runs out, we're dead. And if you hear slight music playing in the background... I will tell you that Matthew Mercer, Dungeon Master Extraordinaire, had music synced up on his iPad that that accompanied perfectly every scene, every place we were in. When there was danger, the music would change. He's amazing. I'm I'm not sure he's human anymore. <laughs> uh, but here here is a little voice sample. From okay, uh, everyone who's not who's, who's not Scanlan, make an acrobatics check right now. It's ah! like, like they're moving at different speeds, and it's kind of offsetting okay. the football. Oh, oh no! Oh, the six, two. Where's my acrobatics? No. Uh, I'm running the other way. 22. 24. Okay, good. All right. Actually, no. 20. Oh, God shit. Damn 24. It, All right, so you, you just leap, hand plant, <laughs> a double, like, like land perfectly on the other side with him. You guys are back, I'm awesome. back, back on the platform as you're bolting hey, forward to get to the Hey, thanks platform. for almost killing me with your fucking arrow. No, no time. Run. <laughs> and we Come both, on. Both, both you guys bolt and actually, like, in, in the, the, the frenzy of it, slam into each other. Like, oh, God, fall on the ground. Guys. Sorry. Sorry. You get back up and one of the other ones, <laughs> one of the big uh, tiles next to you, <laughs> Oh, so this all of a sudden fuck. speeds up and it hits the ceiling like shit. So it's not like slow release. No, they're moving oh, at different god. speeds. Oh god! I rolled a fourteen. All right, you you managed. You're catching up to them. That a serious issue right now. All right. Oh, and did you catch that I, I did the light? Yeah, we have light. Yeah. Oh, okay. look at light. All right. So you, got, you guys are turning forward That's now. That's why you guys are um, doing each other. Uh, actually, for this one, both of you guys <laughs> make a, uh, make perception checks to see who? which platform is moving the slowest. Who does who? How? Uh, both of you. Oh, fourteen. Behind. Fucker, 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 fucker. fucker. Nice. Ten. Plus a lot, because I'm Plus awesome. perception. All right, great. All right, so you guys, as you guys run forward, another one slams up in front of you, Fuck. and you, you look across the way, and you see that there's a pattern to the some ones that are rising faster and slower, and both of you go, oh, left, right, left, right, and you kind mm. of, like, make a quick little eye motion, and you both... Lefty, take, loosey, righty, tighty. You got it. Okay. <laughs> jump, jump, jump. You manage to, to, to catch on one side. Your foot slips on one corner, and you start to lean forward one that starts coming upward towards you. Okay. You grab the back of his armor and pull him back. You are fucking like, heavy! Skims the front of your face. Oh, shit. At which point you guys make it to the fountain, and you can now see, you can now see the fountain itself. There's like there's water up top, and it's draining out into a small pool, and the pool itself seems to have some sort of weighted mechanism in it. Okay, uh, hold on. What do we do? I, I wanted to stop wait, we're like, and wait till all of them rise, and then gently walk over. <laughs> Is this what's going yes, on? Yes, that's what's okay, happening. I'm still going. Uh, right, so you, you, you guys have ran through. Time. time. We're out of time. No, no, we still Not got yet. some. All right, so, so you, you guys have so moved wait, past we're at the them. Fountain? You guys are the fountain. What do we do? You guys have moved up to them. Perception check that shit. So are you you guys going to help them or just keep on pushing? I'm I'm, 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 I'm running. They just run past. You fucking dick. (laughs) They're running back and forth. You guys are joking. Okay, 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 fine. Let's get back up. Make another acrobatics check for both of you. Because now it's starting to get even more haggard and varied. Can I use my... my Shit, nine. Sixteen. Nine. Okay, sixteen. You make it across the way, leaping and landing. Sixteen plus. You smile. You guys have all... All of you have made it to the other side where the fountain is, except for Grog, who is currently face down on one of the platforms that's rising up. Okay, hold on. 
I'm sending, what are you gonna do? I'm sending Monty over to go, get to, to help you. Us. Know, Monty, you know, you know, Monty can carry spells, more than like spells, ten pounds. Spells, spells. Dragon's breath. I'm going to. I'm going to freeze the water at the top at the top of the at the of the fountain. Start playing go for the it. ukulele. Oh my god. What? Start playing the ukulele. <laughs> I, I rolled a seventeen on the right. Come on, yeah. come on, twenty. Uh, 15, 16, 20, 22. Okay, so at, at this point, you rear back. Oh, my skills and are all, singing. All, all, all of this, this frost, just like intense frost breath, just shrieks out, and all the water tenses up and freezes in place, and all the ratchets go. All the platforms stop moving. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Smart lizard. So as you can see, oh my god, it was pretty high stakes. It's so intense. I am right back in it. I've, ah, oh, it's so great. There, there were moments when there's a where there was a lull, but at that point, he had uh, Matthew had slapped down an hourglass, and when the sand was out, we were all squished. We we're all going to turn to jelly. So oh. it was a little bit of pressure at that moment. It was incredible. I can't believe it took me 36 years to play this game. <laughs> it's been there the whole time. And now perhaps you'll play them for the next 30 uh, years. It's so great. Guys, uh, yeah, if you get a chance, go go get out a pen and paper and play some D&D because it's oh, so yeah. much fun. And we're going to definitely do this again. It's not even, we. it's going to become a regular thing. It, it'll be its own thing, I think, outside of this podcast. Yeah. We need to keep coming up with new, new fun things. We new. can't return to this. Or maybe, you know, uh, in year five, we could be like, oh, we're oh, coming we revisit. Community. Sure, yeah. sure. Mm-hmm. But in general, we're going to try to do new new fun things every every episode. But man, what a great time that was. We were up till, I think we were there till two or three in the morning. Uh-huh. Um, we got to start earlier because... For sure. Most of you a-holes got up at like 11 the next day. <laughs> I fucking got up at 5 a.m. and made blueberry fucking pancakes. With okay. a Dungeons & Dragons yeah. hangover. It was fucking hard, yeah. I did I have bet. a D&D hangover. I bet. But man, uh, it was awesome. Uh, I, ho- I hope that audio gives you guys a little bit of, of a taste of how of how great it was. And uh, and it's all because of this podcast that mm-hmm. we did it, damn it. It's going to force us to do shit uh, that, that wouldn't get done ordinarily. And now we're, we're looking at the following week Ugh. and figuring out what we can do. And when we come back.